worship is an act of reverent honor and homage to God. An act of reverent honor and homage to God. And homage is special honor or respect shown publicly. A special honor, special respect that is shown publicly. But worship also means to bow down to God, to lay prostrate. The same word that is used for worship is the same word that would describe the way a dog licks its master. When we worship, we are saying that God is worth. That God is worthy. God is worth our submission to him. God is worth our praise to him. God is worth our service to him. God is worth, God is worthy. In Psalm 29, and it is good, we, we learn the secret of, uh, of worship. Psalm 29, given to the Lord, O ye mighty, given to the Lord glory and strength, given to the Lord the glory due unto his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now God is worth, God is worthy. You will never go wrong when you worship God because God is worth more than you will ever ascribe to him. God is worth more than we will ever give to him. To declare worth, to attribute worth to God is to worship him. And we can worship God. We can worship God in public. We can worship God in private. We can give God corporate worship. In other words, we worship God together with others like when we come to church. We give God corporate worship. We sing together. We speak words of, uh, of uh, praise and, uh, and honor to God. We ascribe greatness to God together as a people. But we can also worship God privately as individuals. You know, like uh, Saul, the king, taught Samuel, please... 1 Samuel 15 and uh, 24 and 25. And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Verse 25. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. Come with me that I may worship the Lord. Now, Saul wanted to individually give worship to God. Even when Satan was tempting Jesus in uh, Luke chapter number 4 and uh, scripture verse number 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. So I'm saying that there is corporate worship and there is also personal, individual worship. Don't get satisfied when you worship together with us on Sunday or on Wednesday or on any other day that we may call a solemn assembly for us to come together and worship. You ought also to have moments when you alone worship God. It's important to develop the capacity within yourself to turn to God and to ascribe greatness to God, to worship God. For instance, it is important to learn how to start your day worshiping God. And also we need to get to a point where we can worship God intentionally. You set a moment to pray and intentionally worship God. Ascribe greatness to God. Recognize, tell God there are many things that only God has made possible for you. Then also set a time when you can 
write down things you are thankful for to write down things that you can thank god for life and the times that we are living in there's a lot of negativity in life there's a lot of complaining in the world fuel prices are high the price of commodities very high people are complaining and it is very easy unless you are careful it's very easy to forget to be thankful to god so sit down sometimes thank god you can walk you can stand on your feet there are many people on the face of this earth that cannot as much as stand on their two feet there are many reasons as to why you can worship god write down some of these things thank god you have a mind and you are able to keep yourself alert even when the word of god is going forth you are alert some people are not in order for us to worship god rightly we must make an attempt to know god we make an attempt to know god and the things that god is able to do or has been able to do in our lives jesus talking to the samaritan woman in john 4 he said ye worship ye know not what so it is important for us to at least attempt to know god verse 21 jesus said unto our woman believe me the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the father you worship you know not what we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews how wonderful it is to know who you worship if you know nothing else about god know this that god is a creator of the universe then know this that god is the all powerful one the know that god is the one who knows all he is the all knowing he knows everything god knows everything so there is nothing mark this down there is nothing that happens on the face of this earth that god does not know now god knows listen to me very carefully god knows not only what you are thinking but what you could have thought but you didn't think god knows what you have done God knows what you are doing but God also knows what you could have done which you didn't do. He's all knowing. Now imagine now standing before such a one who knows all. He made you. He created you. He made you. Even before you were conceived in your mother's womb, he knew you. There are many reasons as to why we ought to worship God. He knew you before you were born. He caused you to be conceived in your mother's womb. And when you were born, you were thrust into his hands. And he has a plan for you. This same God has a plan for you. All the things concerning you were written in God's own book, scripture tells us. There isn't one of them that came by accident. The way you look, the shape you have ended up having over time all of it was known by god 